Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So I want to go over how to draw quadrupeds and I'm going to start with a horse um, and then move on to a centaur and then using the exact same armature as the horse except with the head removed, um, a fictional quadruped. And one of the great things about these armatures is you can customize them and change limb lengths and back segments and all that sort of stuff and make your own custom creatures. So with the horse, the saddle comes attached to the center so I'm redrawing it there because that's important it gives you a guide for where the back of the horse is and then the belly or the, the front of the rib cage meets up with the elbow which is that H uh, joint that connects the humerus to the forearm and then the rib cage essentially encompasses those front two segments on the spine you can see how it kind of nicely wraps around that middle one and the pelvis fits in the back there once you figure out the back, the top of the horse and the bottom of the horse, the rest of it is pretty much just a matter of following the contours uh, with, of course, t taking the creative liberties of applying the, the right use of anatomy, especially in the legs where the limbs are a lot thinner than they are in the armature. But as you can see, the first part of the arm that you see on a horse is the elbow because the upper arm is really buried in the chest area and this is this is partly why quadrupeds like horses and uh, and cows are really easy to tip over they don't have their arms can't really open up wide like uh, like other animals uh, have the ability to do uh, the head is almost just a matter of tracing over the the armature and then the neck is just having a nice smooth transition from the head to the spine and the pectoral muscles so now I'm eye dropping all the colors that the armature is providing me. This is giving me a palette to start from and it's also giving me placement for the lighting and shadows. Now obviously as you do this you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the difference between the planes of the armature and the planes that they would uh, be associated with anatomically on the horse so that uh, you don't end up with something that looks uh, robotic and geometric but instead looks organic so having some sense of of uh, anatomy a ho um, some skill some experience drawing horses is obviously going to be helpful and using reference uh, is uh, looking at photographs is also going to help you with this and uh, flipping my artwork horizontally I do so I can look at it with fresh eyes and and what I noticed is that I drew the pelvis much higher than the armature had the pelvis located at and when I did that, I forgot to extend the legs in the process. So that's part of why it was looking kind of weird. Um, in order for the horse's legs to be bent that much, uh, the, the, the horse would have to be in the middle of a leap or running or, or, or crouching. But uh, since I drew the pelvis so high up, um, those legs should really be a lot more extended. So I fixed that. And now I'm just fleshing, fleshing it out. And I could spend hours at this point but up to this point I've only spent about 10 minutes uh, on on the piece so I can assess at this point it's sort of at a, a kind of a finished comp stage where I can decide is this a piece I want to pursue working on um, do I want to crop it differently work on the composition a little more or just go back to the drawing board and and fiddle around with the armature, get a different pose, a different camera angle, maybe a different lighting uh, setup, and uh, and just start over. You know, I haven't really invested a whole lot of time at this point. And that's the beauty of working with uh, the armature is that you can easily iterate on poses, on lighting, on camera, much faster than you could if you were traditionally trying to, you know, work with pencil and paper. So now I'm going to step it up a notch and uh, work on the centaur. But uh, before getting started, I'm going to work with my reference a little bit and modify the proportions because I want to have a centaur that has a smaller uh, human torso relative to the horse. And uh, I'm also going to raise the pelvis so that I can uh, extend the legs. And that way I don't have to worry about fixing these issues uh, later on. That can be part of the challenge sometimes in working with the armature because it is such a skeletal representation of, uh, of, of the creature that you kind of have to look at it with a little bit of foresight and see the volume and where they're going to end up at. So I'm following the same 
uh, landmarks I did last time. The elbow gives me a sense for where the chest begins, where the you know where do the the rib cages, and then the saddle at the top is giving me a guide for the top uh, of the back of the horse. And uh, I have a whole video devoted to human anatomy and how to derive those landmarks from the armature, so I would suggest looking at that. But um, as you can see here, the, the it's pretty self-explanatory. The hands especially are almost just a matter of tracing over. And uh, then everything else you just have to flesh out. Finally, once I've got the sketch I like, I go in and fill it up with uh, the colors that the armature has. This gives me a palette to start from, and it also gives me uh, some blocking for light and shadow. So it saves me a lot of time, and it, uh, it gives, helps me achieve a very realistic three-dimensional result. And again, I highly recommend uh, using other reference material too. Doing your research is really going to help ahead of time. Take a look and see what other artists have done with centaurs. Look at photos of horses. Look at photos of bodybuilders. Um, it's going to really help inform your anatomy and doing some research ahead of time. At this point, I've spent, yeah, again, maybe 10 minutes on the piece and uh, I can choose to keep working with it if I see potential or I can just go back and keep iterating with the armature and try to find a different pose or angle that's going to work better for the piece. But if you do stick with it, then it's just a matter of going in and, and polishing it up, cleaning up things, adding more detail, adding more texture, uh, and uh, you know, taking it to wherever you want to take it. So with fantasy creatures, all bets are off because you can just invent your own landmarks. You're, you can associate the armature any way you choose to. And once you create those rules, you can then repeat them for the same armature in multiple postures and multiple angles and really easily create um, turnarounds of your character or your concept art. So this could be great for a model sheet or it could be great if you're doing 2D animation, but uh, essentially, if you're if you're making up your own creature, um, the rules are really up to you, and the armature is very customizable. So you can pull pieces apart. You can buy arms and legs uh, with different lengths. You can attach multiple segments, tails, horns, different head shapes. Uh, I mean, the possibilities are almost limitless. What I'm using here is essentially the exact same armature as the scent that I was using for the centaur and the horse, but there's no, there's nothing attached to the neck at the very end. And so I'm associating the, the top of the neck there with, um, with a head in, in this example. So I'm associating the, the end of the neck there as a, as a head. Now, another approach you could take is to just go painterly with this and uh, use Photoshop's Replace Color tool to change your starting color palette. And instead of worrying about drawing, just go in and paint over it and see what happens. Just be more organic about it. Uh, I like working in this way sometimes because it's kind of a change of pace. It's, it's kind of like working sculpturally. It's like you're using the colors as clay and uh, you're building and removing uh, volume um, as you see fit in a very intuitive, uh, more painterly way. This was literally like one minute into the piece right here. Um, so it's a really fast way to work, and that's one of the reasons I like it. So I think that concludes this tutorial. I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, send me a message on facebook.com forward slash armature9 or send me an email at store at digital double dot com. We have a contest going on for quadrupeds on our Facebook page. So essentially all you have to do is use any photograph we've posted of a quadruped and derive from it your own imaginary 
or realistic portrayal of a creature or animal. So um, take a look at that. If you uh, win the contest, you get a free, you get to pick between a free horse stallion armature or the biped, both of which are $180. So I hope you'll participate and send me your feedback. Thanks, guys. Bye.